Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to another installment of Scott's Elections here for Saturday, February 29th. Before we get into today's play of the day, quick recap of what happened yesterday. We ended up picking up a nice easy winner once again with the Timberwolves and Magic over uh, 232 and a half, which was available on uh, FanDuel at minus 110. Really wasn't a sweat at all, kind of like all the other Timberwolves games. I mentioned it for about a week and a half or so. We've had a couple of plays of the day on the Timberwolves overs, and they continue to cash with ease. Um, really wasn't a sweat game cash with about, uh, I believe it was five minutes to go, and the game ended up getting into the 260s. Minnesota can't stop anybody. It's not news to, any, to anyone. And Orlando scored at least 33 points in each of the four quarters. So they ended up breaking roughly 140, and we picked up a nice easy winner there. So we're going to be looking for another play that a winner here on Saturday. But um, since most of the NBA game lines have not been out yet, um, Orlando actually scored 136, but either or, that game ended up flying over. Um, since most of the NBA game lines are not out yet, uh, the play that is going to be on college basketball, and will be in a matchup in the West Coast Conference, and it will be on a total. Uh, it's between BYU and Pepperdine, and we like the over 155, which is available on FanDuel at minus 105, and that will be the play of the day. Now, a couple of reasons why we like the over here. First of all, uh, these teams already played each other once this season, and the first meeting was very high scoring. The total is at 155 right now, and the first meeting totaled 187 points. No overtime needed, no nothing. BYU won pretty easily, but as a whole, anytime you get uh, two teams that combine to score over 180, and their second matchup totals at roughly 155, I have to bet the over on that. I just feel like that makes perfect sense. BYU won 107 to 80. I think BYU should win pretty easily once again. But both these teams love to play at a fast pace. Uh, both teams rank in the top 104 in the country in adjusted offensive tempo according to Ken Palm rankings. So both teams love to play at a fast pace. And I think both of them will encourage each other to play at a fast pace as both teams have a serious chance of getting into the 80s in this game. Plus, BYU offensively has been playing some very solid basketball as it has scored at least 77 points in eight of its last nine games. So BYU's offense is in very solid form. Uh, they beat Gonzaga in their last game after scoring 89. Uh, this team has just been cooking on all cylinders offensively. Uh, mostly ever since Childs came back. Uh, they scored 91 against Gonzaga, actually. But ever since Childs came back, he has completely changed this team. And BYU is currently ranked 17th for a reason. This team's very good. But Childs, who's only played in 17 of the 30 games this season is averaging 21.2 points per game along with 8.6 rebounds. He is a huge difference maker offensively, and with him back in the lineup, it definitely opens up more room for Hawes and Toulson to shoot from the outside. So I think you should see BYU play well once again offensively. Meanwhile, uh, you still have Pepperdine, who even though offensively uh, they've been very solid, have been pretty underwhelming as a whole so far this season. Pepperdine as a whole, um, really just not that great as Pepperdine is currently one game over 500. However, Pepperdine's offense is still averaging 76.2 points per game in comparison to BYU's 80.6. So I think both teams should be able to go up and down and get into the high 70s to low 80s, give or take. I think this game will be close. But you still have Colby Ross, who's averaging 20.2 points per game for Pepperdine, along with Cameron Edwards, who's averaging 16.7, and Kessler Edwards is averaging 13.3. Uh, Pepperdine has four separate players who are averaging double digits, and I think you should see them play well once again in this game. Plus, Pepperdine's also shooting 79.5% from the foul line, so this team does have the ability to capitalize on free opportunities from the charity stripe, which is always a good sign for the over. But I think this game should get into the 160s. BYU should score 80-85, give or take, and I think Pepperdine should be able to to score at least 70. So for that reason, I think you should find some value on the over here. So the play that I once again for Saturday, February 29th is going to be on the over 155 between BYU and Pepperdine. And that one is available on FanDuel at minus 105. Now looking at some of the leans on today's card, I already did my winners or winners video today. So I already gave out three additional plays there. So if you want to check those out, you can. But for the rest of the card, I'll give out some leans on college basketball. Uh, first of all, lean to Iowa minus four. Uh, Penn State, despite the fact that they finally snapped their losing streak by beating Rutgers, very unimpressive fashion as they ended up blowing a double-digit lead and barely holding on for the end. Meanwhile, Iowa, even though they lost to Michigan State on the road in their last game, 
They hung tough and were winning a decent portion of it, which is always encouraging. But they have been a lot better at home than they have on the road. I think Garza is a huge matchup problem for Penn State. I think he'll have probably 25 and 12 again. So for me, only to Iowa, I think they should be able to get the job done. Um, other than that, uh, looking at the rest of the card here, um, what else do I like? Um, I'm going to lean to Marquette minus one and a half against Seton Hall. Um, anytime you have a ranked team that's an underdog to an unranked team, I have to lean to the unranked team. Uh, one and a half, I think that sounds pretty reasonable. Seton Hall has been hit or miss lately. Uh, they've been playing a little bit better, uh, especially after that buzzer beater win against Butler. But based on the line alone, I think Marquette should put in a nice performance at home. And I think you should see them play well. So small lean to Marquette on that one. Um, other than that, lean to West Virginia minus 8.5 against Oklahoma. Uh, West Virginia has been very underwhelming lately uh, as a whole. However, they have still been very solid in Morgantown this season. I think you should see them play well once again in front of their home fans on uh, Saturday. Uh, if you look at West Virginia so far this season, uh, West Virginia is actually 13-1 and at home this season, and they are 9-5 and against the spread at home, whereas Oklahoma is 2-8 and on the road overall, and they are also 3-7 and on the road against the spread. So I don't trust Oklahoma. I think this line's high for a reason. I think West Virginia should win by double digits. Lean to the Mountaineers on that one. Um, other than that, though, I'm going to lean to Duke minus 3.5 against Virginia. This game's very tough. I'm, I'm not going to bet it personally. But at the end of the day, I just don't think Virginia has enough offensive weapons. Duke has been pretty hit or miss. They're coming in off a loss against Wake Forest. They should be very motivated to put in a good performance. I think Virginia will struggle to break 60 points as usual. And I think Duke has the athletes to uh, get enough um, second chance points in order to cover this number. So lean to Duke minus the three and a half. Um, other than that, I'm going to lean to San Diego State minus five. Just because they lost one game doesn't change the fact that they're better than Nevada. I think this game will be close, but I think San Diego State will make enough plays uh, both offensively and defensively in order to cover this number. I think San Diego State wins by about eight. So for me, lean to the Aztecs on that one. And other than that, uh, I'm going to lean to uh, Maryland minus two and a half against Michigan State. Uh, Maryland ended up having a throwing comeback against Michigan State in the last meeting. And Maryland's also coming in off a throw and comeback against Minnesota on the road. Now they return home. Michigan State has been a lot better home than they have on the road this season. And I think you should see Maryland perform pretty well in front of their home fans. Would it surprise me if Michigan State won? No. But at the end of the day, Maryland is still 15-0 at home this season, whereas Michigan State is 2-7 against the spread on the road. So based on that alone, I think, I think Maryland should win this game. It will be close, but I think Maryland will win by 5. So lean to Maryland uh, minus the 2.5. But the play that I once again is going to be on the over 155 between BYU and Pepperdine, and that one is available on uh, over 155, and that one's available on FanDuel at minus 105. Uh, that's going to do with the installment of Scott's selections here for Saturday, February 29th. Good luck to all of you and your respective bets today. Bye, everyone.